get by It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a beach If you find the same And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. And you know, some you've heard of, some you've never heard of. Kim, I like hearing about the challenge stories. So, you know, I had someone on, uh, Moise Navone, who was the founding engineer at Mobileye, and they had a journey, and they were acquired by Intel for thirteen point two billion dollars. Um, but was struck. Uh, what struck me during the interview was that multiple times they made sacrifices and had to take pay cuts and he had to go back to his family and tell the kids we're pulling you out of all extracurricular activities because we can't afford it and so that's like the true journey of you know, we hear about these success stories but the the you know the ups and downs that people go through to get there is tremendous so check out more episodes in inspiredinsider.com and this episode is brought to you by rise 25 which i co-founded with my business partner john corcoran who who Kim also knows, and uh, Kim's also been on um, Smart Business Revolution, so check that out. And uh, Rise25, we help B2B businesses connect to their dream 100 clients and referral partners and help you run your podcast. So essentially, and get ROI, which is important, which we'll talk about with Kim, making sure people get ROI from social media. And just like Kim thinks, you must be in social media, must get ROI from social media is how we feel about podcasting. Okay, it's been the best thing I've done for my business and my life because I've met business partner, um, gone to people's weddings, I've gone on family vacations with people. Um, and so check out rise25.com uh, and you can email us at support at rise25media.com if you have questions about podcasting and clients that we have worked with, Harvard alumni group, Berkshire Hathaway company, SaaS companies, and many more. So check it out. Um, I am excited to introduce today's guest, um, who I've known for a long time, Kim Walsh Phillips, who has put more than a billion dollars in her clients' pockets through direct response social media marketing. And Kim is a multi seven figure business entrepreneur. Most importantly, she's a lover of all things Disney. And, you know, she's the best selling author of No BS Guide to Direct Response Social Media Marketing with Dan Kennedy. You can check it out at nobsbookbonus.com, nobsbookbonus.com and her company, PowerfulProfessionals.com. And you know she's spoken all over the world, Moscow, Dubai, Traffic and Conversion, GKIC Super Conferences, Kevin O'Leary, Shark Tank, Meetup. I'm sure I'm missing a few, Kim, but um, thanks for joining me. Oh, it's my absolute privilege. I love talking to you. And the fact that we can do it and share it with others today is my favorite. Um, you know, there's so much to talk about, and I love your approach of direct response. People, I know when you originally approached Dan Kennedy with social media, he's like, I'm into direct response. I want, I put something in, I want money out, right? Can you talk about the initial response he had with when you went to him with social media in general and how you shifted his mindset a little bit? When I first read his book, it was really interesting because it was my first introduction to direct response at all. I was from a PR and and publicity background. And so I was struck by the fact that marketing should have some direct result from it instead of just awareness. And I loved that concept. The problem was, right, Dan was all things anti-social media, the one thing I knew how to do, right? So I started applying his strategies to what I did. And when it started to work, it was incredible. And I took a path to get to know him that I have used before, and that was to find a way to invest in something that he cared about. So I became a member of one of his coaching programs, and our coaching program had a a contest that you could apply that um, apply for that to show um, your results of their in their program. Well, I used it as an opportunity to just detail what I had learned from him and how that I applied the strategy to what I did and the result that happened because of it. So it really became a huge ego play for him in a way. I'm not saying he had that, but I, the first way you approach anybody in marketing, and let's just put this out there right now, is like one of the first lessons everyone should follow if they're not currently doing it. When you want to work with someone, you first have to give them a reason to pay attention to you. 
And if that reason is all about you, they're not going to pay attention. But if you make it all about them, they're much more likely to pay attention to you. So my entire application was about the ways that his strategies had worked effectively in the channel I was in, which just happened to be social media. I got um, named as one of the fin finalists for that contest. I had an opportunity to present live and I wasn't the winner, but I was told I was the I was between me and the person who actually won, but he invited me to come to the winner's weekend where I had another opportunity to present to him. Well, again, I wasn't going to use this as a chance to just get free advice from Dan. I was going to use this as an opportunity to show him what I was doing right now in the marketplace with his uh, methodology. And so I had, I was the only person in that contest who came with handouts to everybody. <laughs> I had boxes I put together. I had done my research on each person and I presented. And during that event, he actually pulled me aside and said he had clients he wanted me to work with, that I, he saw how I had used what he had done. And he could tell that I was someone who would actually put the effort in and that it had worked. So my first major direct response social media account was his organization. I did the lead generation for GKIC, a company he had founded with a marketing budget of $10,000 a day that I was able to use to test on Facebook as one of my first major clients. And as you could imagine, getting to do that for a direct response guru, I learned so much early on of how to take these strategies and apply them effectively. And that got you know many of his private clients to come in, many other major brands, and eventually did help me um, bring build my company to a point that I could sell it. Um, but that all happened because I found a path that was going to be effective to reach him. You know, Kim, when I learn and study and get to know people, um, you know, it's funny. If anyone looks at what you're doing or have done, you know, take your 10,000 fans, you know, in 72 hours, you know, yeah. I've never seen stuff, you know, people make claims, your stuff works. It works over and over again. And I'm just shocked. Like, even though, you know, when, when you talk about these strategies, you know, it's, they just work, you know, and, and it's, you don't need to be some, you know, physicist to actually implement them. And, and that's what I love about them. Um, what are, what's the, some stuff working today, you know, with the no BS guide to social media and, and some of the stuff in that, that people can get in that book? You mentioned the how to get 10,000 fans and I, there's some major strategy behind that, that I'd love to talk about for a second. Maybe yeah. okay Go okay. ahead. Yeah. Rock it out. All right. Awesome. So, and it still works by the way, if you don't have followers on your page, you can get a free workshop at three days to 10 k.com. It's actually cheaper now than ever. You, you can get fans in for half a cent a piece right now because advertising is less expensive now than it ever has been before. But there's a whole strategy behind that. So there is, um, I, I will tell you, like my favorite thing in the world to talk about is not Facebook fans. <laughs> Yet I talk about it all the time. Why? Well, there's two reasons. One is my audience needs many things, but the thing that they're looking for right now is leads. They want leads and they want audience. That's what they're looking for. So that's how I reach them. And that's what I give them. It's not a surprise that my Two major evergreen funnels start with how to get Facebook followers and how to grow an email list. Those are my two major evergreen webinars that I run because that's what my audience wants. And so once they come in via that concept, right, then I can help them with all sorts of things, but I can't help them with anything else if I can't get them to pay attention in the first place. So all of you who are putting messages out there, pick one thing clear over clever one thing that your audience wants right now and that's what you focus on not about you not about all the things you can do for them but what's one thing they want right now second thing is the reason why these strategies work so well in my marketing is because they get a quick win right away right away and for many of them it's not even that like they see that it works they see that what i show them how to do works it's that they can start believing in themselves because for many of them they tried lots of marketing things before and it probably wasn't their fault that it didn't work it probably was a 
terrible strategy that wasn't to totally proven out. Maybe it worked for some guru for a week or so. They taught it and this no longer works anymore. And the person, you know, the entrepreneur had no success with it. Well, they questioned themselves to say, can I ever make anything in marketing work? Why our strategy works so well is because they get to see within an hour something they tried produced a result. And now they think, okay, okay, I might be able to do this. I might be able to follow a blueprint and not just take action, but have action that results in something. So I encourage everyone to think about what is a quick win your target market can get from the very beginning of working with you that you can utilize in order to build trust with them, give value to them before asking them to buy anything and also help them to believe in themselves a little bit. The book is chock full of strategies like this. I am someone who am really, I, it's impossible for me to just go on a show, be in a book or anything without giving a step-by-step -step strategy you'll be able to pull from immediately. So guaranteed every single chapter has a strategy in it that you can take right now and put into practice and Inside your business. Um, but one of my favorite ones are about Lou and Tammy Santini. So they are travel agents. And as you can imagine, that's a challenging industry to be in right now. And But it always has been, right? Because for a long time, people didn't believe that they needed a travel agent in order to book travel. And so pe travel agents were suffering. Well, Tammy uncovered um, a niche within travel that would not only not require her to worry about when the next job was coming in, but also would survive something like a pandemic, okay? So she started specializing in destination weddings. Now, destination weddings will be one of those few travels that they weren't canceled. They were postponed. All other travel agents who specialize well, in other things. Well, unless, you know, quarantining with someone, they're like, this is off. Too much of a person. <laughs> but yes, I would agree with that. But I also expect that there's some babies coming and we got some new <laughs> destiny <laughs> plan. So there's both sides of that going on. Um, yeah, so she, she had that set up. They had that in place and they started putting that in place in their business. Well, she grew her company to multiple six figures just with destination weddings, right? And because now you're planning the wedding, you're guest travel, and it's much more profitable. And the commissions that these resorts pay is much better than other kinds of travel you can book yourself. So she started coaching others on how they could start that. And so all she did was a weekly Facebook Live that she could start sharing tips and strategies to other travel agents on how they can start to pivot to destination weddings. Mm. Then when everything happens in the world as of late, she pivoted again to giving survival guide of how to get your brides to postpone instead of cancel, how to still get clients right now, even with everything's going on in the world. Because she had established her audience already, she was able to communicate with them quickly, even within the chaos that was going on right now. Also, because she had put a side income into her business for coaching, when her trips went down, she had other income coming in. So she's also showed her folks how to do that too. So she leverages the free channel that we're using right now, a Facebook Live, to reach her audience um, and uses it also to create new leads because people are tuning in to find out how they can do what she did inside her own business. That's really smart. Um, it's funny because Kim, I've gotten two postpones of destination weddings that I've been invited to in the past week. So, there you um, go. yeah. Um, how, I mean, product market fit and finding a niche that is really perfect that, I mean, that's like a head slap. Wow. That, that makes perfect sense when you say that, how did she figure out that destination weddings was the, the niche she should really go deep on? <laughs> They had already had some success with sandals and some other resorts that are popular for that type of event. And they had unlocked, um, she had gotten some awards from them for being one of their higher salespeople. And so, or travel agents, I, they don't call it salespeople, but travel agents who basically just have the vacations for them. And so they realized that if they just spent more time focusing on that, how could they be more profitable? And smartly, they saw, okay, well, how can we sell more than one vacation at one time? And that would be through doing event vacations, which would be your destination weddings. 
I love it. I love wow. it. Wow. Um, and I want to just go back to the Facebook, you know, three days to 10k.com. And you said something a half a cent per fan. What was that? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing because of the more eyes that are on Facebook right now. Um, according to Facebook, as of April 1st, that Facebook usage was up 70%, 70%, right? And we know that there was already 8 billion views of Facebook videos on Facebook a day as of October of 2019. And now we're up 70% in viewership. Like there's so many people consuming content. They're on there. They want more, but then there's less businesses producing content. So there's more eyes, less competition, and there's such a huge opportunity. So we've actually changed the 10,000 fan strategy over the years. You can now actually target more um, qualified fans from the very beginning, going to a more global audience, and you're able to reach them for one cent to half a cent each. Um, and I have this running on my page right now. I'm doing, I've got, it's no, uh, Rich Sheffrin. He just launched his campaign a couple weeks ago. It's working incredibly well. I've had multiple students um, email me in the last week. We're getting our numbers in for less than a penny a piece per fan. Wow. That's amazing. And they yeah. can, they can find out more at that website, three days to 10 k.com. Yep. Okay. You know, and I will personally attest to it. John and I were like, is this true? Can this really work? We, uh, <laughs> We did it, and um, I think at this point we have over fifty-five thousand fans, and they're real fans, real people. It's not like yeah. fake, fake people or anything. And and we are at ten thousand. I'm like John, keep running it. They keep running it. Twenty thousand. Like Jeremy, can we keep running it? Keep running it. So we should probably turn it back on. Um, but it really works. It's amazing. It's a good time to turn it back on for sure. For yeah. sure. I would, I would actually. Let me tell you. Let me switch it. Don't just turn it back on. Watch the, the latest video. It's about 10 minutes long. Just do it the new way because you'll get even better results okay. now. Three days to 10k.com. Yep. Yeah. I, uh, Kim, we buy all your stuff. We use all your stuff. And uh, so appreciate it. We'll definitely do that. Um, any, you know, things stick out, you know, back to the no BS guide to social media marketing. Um, what's some great advice you've gotten from Dan Kennedy or a favorite Dan Kennedy story? And if you, anyone know doesn't know Dan Kennedy, you know, check out his books and, and the stuff that he's done with Kim. But he, when you track back a lot of people, how they started in direct response marketing, um, the common source oftentimes is Dan Kennedy. Yeah, for sure. Like the greatest people you're learning from right now, I'll come back to him. And it that's amazing. Um, and there's so many lessons that I got from him that allowed us to grow our company and launch our other things and all the I mean, it's really amazing. One of the things that I got from him that was one of my earliest lessons I learned that has helped me so well in social media, and this is something that is good for everyone watching. He said, the higher up the flagpole you go, and use a different word, but I'm going to say tush. The higher up the flagpole you go, the more your tush is exposed. And I remember <laughs> the first time I had somebody they criticized me on social. It was years ago, but I, once I started following him, I thought, ooh. I made it. And it's a much different reaction than, oh gosh, why did they think that about me? And it actually helped me to disconnect from the naysayers. And he is such an amazing example of someone who stands for something and is willing to have people not agree with him so that he can have raving fans who follow all that he says. And from the very beginning, I knew I'm going to stand for something. I'm going to be controversial in some way. And I'm going to be okay with people not being okay with it. Because if you try to be everybody, everything for everybody, you're nobody to everybody, right? And so that was one of the greatest lessons I got from the very beginning. It's funny because he's going to be a guest on our, on the show launch day on the live party. And I still had to fax him. I was going to say, he's he's going to be a guest through a fax machine? How is that possible? You're right. And we're recording it. He's just going to be on audio. and um, But he's still doing it, which is great. He'll be calling in instead of doing it on camera, and which is all fine. But he still has stuck to who he is and his brand, no matter what. And he has... That in itself is such a huge lesson because, of course, it would have been easy for him to give of course, it would have been easy for him to find other ways to do things, but he has stuck true to who he is since the very 
beginning. And that's been, that's amazing. And I um, love that he's willing to stand for something at all times and how that has created these raving fans that have been with him for decades. You know, how, how do you feel he shaped the book itself, the No BS Guide to Social Media Marketing? There's certain input that he gives or certain stories that he wanted to make sure were included? His need for tracking ROI and measurement, I think, makes it an even better story, an even better book, because when people think of social media, often they don't think about it, right? It's a free resource that you can anybody can get in front of. And you can start posting without worrying about the ad spend like you would if you did direct mail or television advertising. And so there's some terrible marketing on social. Let's be real. Like 87% of businesses who are on there have no trackable ROI because they aren't doing anything to be able to track it. And so his need for measurement and the stories that he tells within the book that don't didn't have any or required it. Um, are such a great example of how businesses can do social completely wrong and in other ways, how they can get it done completely right. So one of the things he talks about is Ford um, motor cars, how they for years did social marketing but didn't track any ROI. Then they stopped advertising because they didn't see the correlation, but they started to see their sales decline. So when they came back to social, they started actually putting tracking in place, which let them um, decide ad spend based on data analysis versus just guessing. And that way too many people guess when it comes to ad spend on social when they could truly be tracking it from the beginning. Hmm. You know, Kim, so um, shout out to Andy Hassan, who's an amazing person, individual. He uh, said, great stuff. I'd like to know the first steps to start leveraging Facebook pages for building a brand. I don't know if you have any advice around that. First step would be definitely to leverage Facebook Live. You have a free content platform that will be distributed with organic traffic right now like never before. We can ne we will never be able to go back to this time with say remember when Facebook would share our content for free with others? Like it's going to be a time where we will look at this like a daydream. And right now they're doing it more than they ever have before. If you haven't gone live before, Go to a great website called answerthepublic.com. That's answerthepublic.com. Look up your topic. See the questions people are asking because mm -hmm. what that website does is shows you the questions people are asking in Google right now about your topic area. Okay? You're going to go there, find the questions people are asking, and you're going to start going live once a week, twice a week, three times a week. Is You just be consistent. Okay? Okay. And then you will um, be able to retarget those people. That's what's so cool about this. Let me show you how it's going to go. You're going to do your Facebook Live simply answering the questions people are asking already. Now, if you never did it before, you simply can say, hey, I'm starting a Facebook Live series because now more than ever, it's important that we stay connected. Bam, that's your first reason why. You get on there, you start doing it. What Facebook does is every time you do a live, it creates this little tiny invisible audience for you that you can then go back to. So if you've been doing these before, this list is sitting there inside Facebook just waiting for you. You can do that right now. You can go into your ads manager and create a custom audience made up of people who have viewed your videos. Now you can spend $5 a day just targeting people who've already shown, okay, they like your stuff, they're interested in your topic, they see you as an expert, they're much more likely to work with you. Give them then on that retargeting ad some kind of free gift to join your list. Some one-page PDF, one quick video, one free funnel they can download. Whatever it is that you do, give them something of value so that when you, they meet you, they're like, hey, they actually offer valuable content. Now they're on your list. Now you don't have to pay Facebook anymore to reach them, and you could communicate with them on an ongoing basis. If I was just starting out, that's how I would start. It's free. Then when you're spending money, it's a super tiny ad spend, and you have the opportunity to grow even more from there. Uh, um, and on the flip side, I know a lot of people are like, ah, I'm really nervous about getting on live, never did it before. That's typically the reason why people say, like, I know I should, but I have it. Here's the thing. Courage is when we move forward, even when we're scared. And so what I'm asking you to do is to have courage 
because the message that you could share with somebody else is more important than the worry you have of what they're going to think about you. None of us like how we sound or look online. Like none of us like that. But I know the words I have to say right now matter more because of the difference they can make to the people hearing it than anyone who might criticize me for any other reason. So if you have something that can help somebody right now and you have the platform in your hands that you can share it on, today is the day. Not like, okay, maybe I'll start tomorrow. No, no, no. Today is the day that you first go live and share that message with others. That's all you have to do is the first time. And over time, it will continue to get easier over and over again. And for free, Facebook will make a list for you. So when you're ready to start spending money on your business, you have that exact audience you can start targeting. Boom, mic drop. Thanks, Kim. Uh, that was awesome. Yeah, um, and you could follow, and what I love about how you think is I'm looking forward to getting the book um, when it comes, wait, is it, did it come out Tuesday or is it comes out, it comes out it comes soon? Out next Tuesday. Oh, right? next Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause you really truly do a step-by-step. -step. You don't leave gaps for question, you know, like, oh, how do I get from here to here? It's really a step-by-step -step. and you just laid it out essentially um, just now for, thanks uh, Andy for the question and um, answer the public.com. I've never not heard of that site before, but that's a, a amazing resource that we should all utilize. Um, you know, it's funny. So, Kim, Dan Kennedy, um, you've also spoken to Kevin O'Leary's group. I feel like very both have kind of similar personas. I wonder some of the things you were able to do with his group and some of his advice from. And if you don't know, if you have not watched uh, the hit TV show Shark Tank, that's where Kevin O'Leary is, is one of the sharks. Yes, Mr. Wonderful. So um, this is an insider tip. So we, a group of us entrepreneurs, won an opportunity to get advice from Kevin O'Leary. And so we chipped together and paid for him, his speaking fee, to come and hang, hang out with us for the day. And so we chipped in and did that together. We had him for the day. And he went around the room to find out about our businesses. And I chimed in with all of my numbers of my company and he said, what is that you do? And I said, social media. He said, wait, what? You're a social media person who knows her numbers? I said, yep. And we connected there. Um, I ended up getting not only him as a client, but became a coach to all of his um, entrepreneurial investments, which was amazing. And what's fantastic about him, just like Dan, is that tracking and measurement's important. He's going to spend money on the things that will generate an ROI. And it was the ability to cut through all the clutter and actually get to the heart of scaling with trackable measurement. That was amazing. But on the flip side, which was also really cool, is as someone who's in this space, I, I could get too much up in like the jargon things or the complicated strategies or tips. And one of the things that I always try to do because my target market are amazing business owners who own incredible companies who haven't yet scaled their business online digitally. That's really my audience, right? They own a business. They don't really know how to scale digitally. I've got to keep my content at a beginner level, like smart people who just don't know how to do this stuff. And so I got to keep it real all the time. And so that's one of my one of my missions. His folks, the folks that have successfully gotten investments on Shark Tanks know, most of them know nothing about social media and the opportunities that exist when it comes to advertising. And so it actually allowed me to go back to beginner and basic things to explain things like you can track a pixel, you can track ROI, you can scale accordingly, you can follow up with people because most of the marketing companies out there had sold these guys things that was just based on awareness that had no measurement in place. And so even, even companies that are working with someone who gets the numbers, they don't know what they don't know. And so it's one of those things that I find super helpful to stay in touch with the, uh, what to go back in time before you knew all the things what at that point of view so you can keep your content much more on level for your people that you're trying to attract with the kevin o'lear are there any specific favorite um case stories or case studies that from working with him or or his companies yes yeah, snarky t is my favorite jenny lynn williams 
Um, it's hysterical tea also. So if you want to check her site out, they're very funny. What is so, it called? What's the website? Snarkytea.com. Okay. And like one of her tea names is Wake the F Up. Like that's how her teas are named. And she was um, the first tea company ever on Shark Tank that got an investment. She got it when she was on, on the show and she was eight months pregnant. And she got an investment from Kevin O'Leary and Bethany Frankel from uh, New York Housewives. So Real Housewives, New York City. So she um, has leverage. So when we started working together, she had only used social from like a brand, not like a product promotion perspective. And when I was looking at her content, I'm like, your content's so good. Like your brand names, your engagement. Let's start bringing your personality more into the marketing. And so she started, the first thing we did when we spent a day to Together is I had to sit on the floor of her closet and we were in a hotel, sit on the floor of the closet. I took a picture of her with her laptop and said, okay, guys, I'm coming out of the closet. I'm going to start sharing more content that's real and legitimate. And it was like more of what's really in my life. And it was just her laughing. And from that day on, her engagement soared because people thought I finally have somebody being real with me what it's like to business and have kids and try to balance it all and not try to make it just Instagram perfect. And so she started communicating with her audience immediately. And then within two months, I'm like, you have raving fans connecting with you. There's an opportunity here to launch something that they can buy. They want to buy more than just your team. She launched a subscription box program. And within 24 hours, she sold out because she had created this audience of raving fans that couldn't wait to work with her. She just did it again. She bought um, a tea brewing, like cold brew tea company, and she put a Kickstarter campaign up there, and it was fully funded within 24 hours because she has created this raving fan um, audience who can't wait to support her and her business. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Kim. That's, you know, a lot of times you have to find your groove, I guess, and you have to put out content before you find out you just need to inject your personality into it, you know? And so you kind of pro probably accelerated that for her and shine that light on that. Um, you know, I want to talk, we're talking a lot of online. You are also a master of offline. Uh, also, I've gotten uh, amazing packages from you. You're just very thoughtful in, in what you put out. Um, what's been your favorite offline like maybe lumpy mail package you've sent out or received I do love the lumpy mail and you're you're gonna get one again this week or just shipped today so we for the party next week. Oh nice I like to gift based on um unique experiences and opportunities versus just like the same thing that everybody gives that you don't remember about. And so being memorable and standing out is also about making that other person feel special that they matter. So I, even as simple as a handwritten note versus sending an email makes a huge difference. But just even start with the email. Like you have people on your show all the time. And I can imagine that there are a whole bunch of people who never even say thank you after you're on via a simple email. Like people just aren't used to being to thanking others. But I have done a lot of really fun gifts. Um, one of the sites I like the best is um, Neiman Marcus because – you can find really cool presents inside there, inside their home um, category. And what Neiman does is they gift wrap it beautifully. And so it's an experience even to unwrap the box. So it's one of my favorite sites to give from. And I'll give you a specific one that I gave to a friend of mine. He's um, a chef and he loves to cook um, for his family. He's big pasta nights, and I've learned that for him over time. So he gave me this incredible referral that turned into a really big speaking opportunity for me. And I sent him, they have this pasta package on there that's Dolce & Gabbana pasta, pasta package. It was like 100 bucks, but that's not crazy for a thank you gift, right? But it was gorgeous, and it was so different. Who would have thought you would get designer colander of some kind? And it came in an amazing package with a note that said like this, thank you so much for bringing so much joy to me and my business. I want this to be joyful for your next family class tonight. And so it was a unique gift. It wasn't a lot of effort on my part because I could just go to their, their site and pick something out. But the way that it came as a gift seemed very personable for him. I've also done a lot of quote gifts. Those are really good to give people because when you turn their knowledge into a memento for them, so not a quote by me, not my logo. You'll never find my logo in a gift I give you. 
it's always going to be something that is about them and helping them to know how special they were to me and how thankful I am for their time um, mm. that they got it. Mm. Thanks, Kim. Thanks for sharing. I know you're a master at that as well. So I wanted to make sure we got some of that great info. Um, first of all, Kim, thank you. I have a couple last questions, but um, I want to point people towards nobsbookbonus.com um, to check out what you have going on. And anything you put out is just jam packed with amazing content so people can take action and get results. Um, so check out the No BS Guide to Social Media Marketing with Kim uh, Walsh Phillips and Dan Kennedy. Um, any Anywhere else we should point people towards, they can also go to PowerfulProfessionals.com as well. Anywhere else we should point people towards. I'm on every single social media channel, right? Please find me with Kim Walsh Phillips. Um, on Facebook, I'm Kim Walsh Phelps, Instagram, the Kim Walsh Phelps. And so if you just put that in on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you like to connect best with people, that's where you can find me. I put out complimentary content all the time. I'm looking to um, earn your trust, give you value. And then if you want more, we can work together. But if you just want to hang out and get the free stuff, we love that too. So I would love to connect with all of you there. You know, um, I always ask Kim, since this is Inspired Insider, what has been a load moment you had to push through and a proud moment i wanted to do you know for you a hustle moment not uh you know we'll talk about the low moment and proud moment but there's a hustle moment that i still remember from we talked it was almost five years ago that we were talking about this topic and i still remember the story um when you were young and it was your parents anniversary i wonder if you could quickly tell that story I was 13 and my parents had a big anniversary coming up and I didn't have the money to pay for a party because I had no money and I have a job. But I thought of a way that I could pay for it by collecting cans and bringing them. I lived in New York at the time and they have a deposit per bottle that you can get back. And so I went around the neighborhood collecting cans long enough to bet get $95, which of course seemed like everything in the world to me at that time, which gave me enough money to pay for a nice Italian dinner to be catered and I could take care of the party fees myself. And that's really just one of many examples of the amazing entrepreneurs that are probably watching right now, because we all know when you don't have the resources, that doesn't mean you say no, that means you get resourceful. And so I've definitely throughout the years used opportunities in front of me to say, what do I want and how am I going to get it? How can I make this work for me um, based on what I have available and what I can put together myself? You inspired the hustle moment. I think this is going to be like a staple on the show now. The Kim Walsh uh -huh. Club. Hustle moment. Um, thanks for sharing. Um, low point that you pushed through um, in your career, like I was mentioning in the front of the the interview. You know, you've had very very successful um, agencies and products and all of this, and you make it look seamless and easy. But um, there's been a journey to that. There's definitely been. I've had a lot of low moments. Uh, one of the worst was back before I knew about direct response and I had not figured out so many of the things. I had to hawk my engagement ring to make payroll. And so I'm in the town pawn shop, which I'd never been in before. And as the guy's asking me what I wanted for my ring, I didn't know that you're not supposed to give honest answers, right? To like this $10,000 ring that I got $1,300 for just so I can make payroll. I had that moment. I had a time mm. where I got a letter from my bank saying they weren't going to cover my overdraft protection anymore while I was home with my newborn baby and I didn't know how I was going to do it. Like there's been a lot of moments that we've held on for dear life. I've leaned into my faith and then pulled all of my resources together to get through it. I mean, I was able to grow my agency literally from declaring bankruptcy at one point to selling it. Um, for a really good exit to then growing our coaching company in three years from zero to making the Inc. 5000 list. So it, these things are possible. It's about bullheaded determination, but not continuing to do things that aren't working. When something isn't working, it doesn't mean working more is the answer. More of the thing that wasn't working before is not the answer. Instead, finding the strategies that have worked from others, the people that you're willing to trade places with because they've had the success that you want and copy what they do. Find their blueprints instead of trying to constantly reinvent the wheel so you can actually achieve what you're trying to accomplish. 
Kim, why, what causes you to not give up in those moments? You know, like you could have given up at any of those points. Um, and like, yeah, throw your hands in the air. I had, uh, you know, it's, it's, thanks for sharing. That must have been like just such a, I can't even imagine how, uh, what a tough moment that would be. Um, what goes through your mind at that point just to keep pushing forward? There's no, it doesn't seem like that's even an option, not an option for you. One thing is that I've, I've had in the very beginning, I've had people work for me. And so I have definitely felt a uh, an obligation to them that they believed enough in me to serve me. And so I'm going to make sure I can always serve them. I've definitely gone in without payroll myself for months and months and months and have got deep into debt while I was still paying them, never letting them know. And that that's just more my personality, I think, than anything. I feel a deep um, connection obligation to my fellow human man, whether or not that smart business probably isn't. And but that I'm not going to change who I am. Like I totally accept that about myself. But at the same time, I, when I mentioned my faith, that's not an accident. I feel literally feel a calling to do what I do that I was put on this earth specifically and sweating it all emotional. I was put on this earth so that there are people out there that won't go through what I went through. There are people on this earth that woke up today thinking, I don't know if I can do this anymore, but they have something that can change the world. They have a message that literally was the prayer request of somebody who woke up today. And if, if I don't show them how they can tell others their message, they never will. And so I know that that's why I was put on this earth. And so there isn't an option for me to stop because I believe my creator created me with that purpose. And so I am driven every single day to reach as many people as I can and tell them how to do it so that they can serve the world in the way that they were created to do it. Thank you. Yeah, totally. Um, on the flip side, a proud moment from people actually listening to you and you changing the world and what's been proud moment for you? Opening up that Inc. 5000 letter with my two daughters and seeing that I was named 475. I did it live on Facebook because I didn't know where I'd ranked and what had happened, but getting them all, and not only were they beside me, but they were beside me right when they came off the bus, which is when I saw that package because I had changed my lifestyle in a way that I could be with them every day, got rid of the nanny, changed my company. And I'm like, I'm going to make my company grow, but in a way that allows me to still be there for my daughters and not miss them growing up. So they're, they're with me. They've come off the bus. I'm present and we're opening up this package together and they get to see that their mama ranked four, seven, five. And that was mm. one of the happiest, most proud moments of my career. And then your daughters, what, what do you feel like they've learned from you? A lot of things. I mean, my Katie is, I think, secretly plotting to take over my company. <laughs> pretty sure. she, she's a drawing of her at a computer with lots of money coming out of it and a mustache on me. So something's happening there. Um, but, she, but yeah, she has learned. She could tell you right now. She knew this since she was five. She hears other people speak. She knows there are two things people are most focused on, love and money. And your messaging needs to tell people how they're going to get one or the other. So hmm. she gets right to the heart of it right away. Um, my other daughter, um, Bella, has seen how all the work that has to go involved with being an entrepreneur. She's not a huge fan of that right now, but so she, but she gets it that it's not like one thing or an easy button. There's the many little steps we take in order to have the success that we want, and so it's been they're they're different, right? One loves to have like the, the shine and the spotlight on them. The other one is more process oriented and introverted. Um, but they both had really fun moments when, you know, coming up on stage and saying things and being part of that journey. That's been awesome. You know, Kim, thank you. Um, I want to next year, I want to read the book, uh, the no BS guide to love or money with Kim <laughs> and Katie. Yeah, okay. So I want to read that book in the next year, but thank you everyone. Check out no BS book bonus.com powerful professionals.com. Kim, it's always amazing to be with you. So thank you. Oh, it's been so great being your friend mm -hmm. and I've loved watching your journey and thank you for having me on your show today. What I've got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.